Hi everyone, it's Britt Simon. Um, so I have a few minutes. I just realized that it's early morning in Australia. Um, and so particularly for um, Australia, um, Australian people, perhaps wondering about the recent activity at Sydney Embassy. Um, I thought I'd take a few questions. I know it's late uh, at night in most of Africa, for example. Um, so, you know, perhaps this, this time will work out well for people down under. So I thought I'd take a few questions about that, but I also, I'll just explain my thoughts about the Sydney Embassy in case, um, in case anyone's uh, catching up later. Um, and welcome to uh, Moses. I'm doing good. Thank you, Moses. Okay, quick, uh, quick update then about uh, Sydney Embassy. Um, we know that Sydney Embassy has now scheduled some interviews. So they were moving, uh, they closed the embassy stupidly while they were moving, they lost the lease on the old building, they're moving to a new building, and they have now, um, they've now accepted some, um, some interviews from KCC. They scheduled around about 40 cases. Um, most of those were OC cases. There were a few from Africa region and I think two from Asia region. It was uh, something along those lines, but, but something like 38, I think it was, from OC region. Now, simultaneously, of course, Suva are doing very well. Suva has been doing a, a great job of carrying the burden um, you know, that, uh, that was left by Sydney just abdicating their responsibility. Um, and so, uh, so there are many selectees that are scheduled for interviews in Suva. And, um, and I wanted to sort of try and explain a little bit about, um, you know, what are the options for people that are scheduled in Suva and perhaps are thinking about switching to Sydney or for any cases which are still not scheduled, had not asked to be um, switched to Suva and so now are hoping to be scheduled in Sydney. Okay, so um, first thing is, if you're already scheduled in Suva, um, I have to admit, I, I tend to be conservative about, um, about moving embassies. I don't think it's generally a good idea unless you absolutely can't avoid it. Um, and so if there's any way you can keep your existing appointment um, in Suva, uh, if that's what you're already scheduled, I personally would, would do that. Um, if you're absolutely determined that you need to move back to Sydney now, you can do that. You can try that. And the, uh, the visas allocated to your case will be transferred with your case back to Sydney if Sydney accepts the, uh, the case transfer. They may or they may not. They don't have to. So the procedure to do that is you ask Sydney Embassy if they would accept your case. Um, if they say yes, you contact them by email. If they say yes by email, um, then you would contact Suva and Suva will transfer the case from their embassy to Sydney. It doesn't go through KCC. It doesn't cause um, the uh, allocated visas to be lost. It's okay. Um, however, sometimes it can lead to mishaps where <coughs> a case gets lost or that sort of thing. And we also don't know, frankly, how Sydney are going to cope with this sudden increase in, in, um, in caseload. Um, it's not just the embassy. Uh, the physicians that are doing the uh, medical interviews prior to, to the actual interview um, will be suddenly overwhelmed. They haven't done anything for a year, and all of a sudden they're going to be asked to do um, all of these interviews. And I think that there will be a sort of a, a choke point uh, around the physicians. And so that creates a risk. So you may say to Sydney, can I get an interview uh, moved from, from Suva? And they'll, Sydney will say yes. But of course, they won't have control over the physicians who might say, you know, there's no way, no way we can cope with that. And eventually, that could feed back to how many cases Sydney take in the future. So, um, you know, at some point, things could go wrong there. The other thing that's going on is that the regional quotas, which are a real thing, um, have, if you look at the scheduled number of scheduled cases, we've already exceeded that number, the quota for, um, for Australia, for, sorry, for OC. It's not Australia specific, it's, it's OC region. Now, they do reclaim 
any uh, refused visas, AP visas, no shows. So although there's about 1130, uh, 1150 people scheduled um, that have been scheduled overall in OC region, which is above the quota, it doesn't necessarily mean that we've exceeded the quota. Um, so, but there's a little bit of a, a risk that at any point they could stop the processing. Now, I think OC region is likely to benefit from um, a reallocation of, of quota from other regions, in particular from Africa region, lo which looks very likely to, uh, to underfill. Um, and so there could be some additional visas given to OC, but it won't be it won't be hundreds. It, you know, it would be if there were five thousand visas uh, not used by um, uh, by Africa, for example, then about an extra eighty five visas would be made available to OC. Okay, so it's not it's not like you know hundreds and hundreds of extra visas. So we have to be a little bit cautious. And if you get an interview right now, hold on to that interview. Don't don't be letting it go because, you know, I just don't think it's smart to be letting go of an interview at the moment. That's that that would be my perspective. If um, if Sydney say yes, I'll take your case from Suva, uh, but we'll schedule that in July, and then the government come along and say, well, no, there's no more. Um, there's no more visas going to be issued because we, by mistake, we exceeded the uh, the allocation. That could happen in July or August. That sort of thing could happen. Um, then you're screwed, um, and you know it's just not not really worth risking. Whereas if you if you've got the visa allocated in a July interview or a June interview in Suva, that's probably your best shot. So um, that's really what I wanted to say for Sydney, but I'd be interested if anyone's got any questions about that. I'm happy to discuss that further um, and, um, you know, let's see how that goes. So fingers crossed for you. Obviously, the fact that Sydney finally pulled their finger out and did something, thank goodness for that. As I've said before, I'm very grateful that Suva actually um, stepped up and did did some stuff, um, you know, to try and help out people. So, uh, So that's good. Okay, so let me take a few questions. How about DV2020? For DV2020 and DV2021, we're still waiting for the appeals. This is the same thing I've been saying for weeks and actually a couple of months now. Um, the appeals will go on until at least September. Uh, we're not going to know anything before then, and we just, we just don't know which way it's going to go. Somebody uh, on my YouTube channel today asked me to be honest with them and tell them, point blank, you know, honestly, what's going to happen. And I honestly don't know. I don't know which way that appeal is going to go. Uh, the the arguments made by the lawyers on our side uh, were extremely effective and actually resulted in the win. Um, the government really don't have new arguments to put forward. They just want to sort of argue the same points. Um, so uh, they've already lost one time but I don't know what's going to happen. The government seem utterly determined not to lose the power for um, for the president, et cetera. So, um, and also not have the, the fiscal year deadline challenged. Um, so, you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens, okay? Um, all the questions that are like, uh, my case number is AF28K or my case number is EU, whatever, all of those questions can't be answered. Firstly, you didn't give me your year, so I got no 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 idea of what year you're you're in. And secondly, I don't know. I mean, I just don't know at the moment. I'm not going to give odds on something that's a total guess. Uh, Luca, you're in you're in Croatia. How are you doing? It's late at night, isn't it, Croatia? Um, must be must be like midnight or something. You're up for for a late evening. I hope you hope you're doing well, Luca. Uh, fingers crossed for you. Um, you know. Frustrating. Anyway, um, good to see you, Kalili. Uh, let's see. Let's see. After following my DS-260 form, I cannot send it because it refers me back to the same case number I used to open it, saying it's wrong. Please, I need your help. Okay. <clears throat> Firstly, uh, I do have a video. If you go on my YouTube channel and check out my videos, I have one video in particular that gives tips on how to submit your DS-260 if you're having problems. Um, don't keep trying, uh, watch the video first, okay? Now, it's probably that you haven't removed the leading zeros from your case number. 
you need to do that. And it might be also that you haven't clicked the information about um, selective service and uh, female um, uh, genital mutilation. Um, so you need to click on that information and then you would find your case could submit. But watch the tips on my, on my video, okay? Um, same sort of question as a moment ago. Is there hope for this case number? That's completely impossible for me to answer. The, the situation for 2022 uh, is becoming very case and embassy specific. Um, the embassies are, have now got a list uh, which is maintained. So when you're in AV status, AV status is when you get an email that says you're current for interview processing. It's not the same as saying you're current. It, when, when they say current for interview processing, it means you've actually been allocated into a queue, um, which is a wait list for the embassy. Now, the wait list is ordered by case number when you're in that wait list, when you're in that status. Um, once you're in that status, you can't change anything about your case. You can't change to another embassy. You can't update your DS-260. There are no changes you can make. So you're now allocated to an embassy. However, a lawsuit um, this week got some answers on Addis Ababa and Khartoum Embassy, and the wait lists for those two embassies were 1,300, 1,100 cases. Cases. So we're talking like 2,500 people or two to two and a half thousand people at each of those embassies in a wait list where the embassy is taking maybe 20 cases a month, each of those two embassies. In other words, those people are without hope. The vast majority of those cases are just not going to get their interview. Um, the only people that are going to get the interview at Addis or Khartoum will be very low case numbers. Now, that's not the same for every other embassy. There are some other embassies that have no wait list. Um, but when you just give me your AF38K number with 2022, I have no idea about which embassy you're at and whether what case status you're in, et cetera. And so it's an unanswerable question. Okay. Uh, do I know anything about Abu Dhabi? Um, not really, no. I don't have any information to give you about that. Uh, 2023 case, AS 19,000 submitted to DS-260. When will I receive the email for sending documents? We don't know yet. That's a good question. We don't know whether they're going to be sending out that email that says send you in your documents. I suspect the first possible emails that we would get that would say that if they're going to run the document procedure this year um, would be in the next week to two weeks, okay? Uh, there should be enough time now to have processed the cases. If they haven't sent them by, let's say, middle of June, then I'm beginning to ex suspect by that point that they're not going to run the document procedure this year uh, for DV 2023, which would be fantastic news if they're not going to do that yet, because the document procedure is just a mess. Okay. Also, you have to give me a little bit more of an idea about EU. You know, what, what, what are you asking about EU? Um, okay, I'm a DV lottery. Next one is Project CW3. I'm a DV lottery winner. After the interview, they requested joint sponsor affidavit of support, but I couldn't find someone to sponsor me. Is it okay if I provide a bank statement in instead? <sighs> it's actually difficult. If, if you had taken statements to the interview, bank statements to the interview, that might have satisfied the CEO on the spot. Now they've asked you for an I-134, and they may be sticky about that. They may insist on seeing an I-134. Um, you know, I wish you'd prepared properly. You should have had one or the other or both preferably in the interview. I, I tell people constantly, prepare properly for the interview. Um, so, you know, you can try and show bank statements. It might, it might work in your case. You would have to have at least $10,000 uh, US per person. So if you're a single person, at least $10,000. That's not a lot of money in American um, American standards. So, um, you know, if, if that sounds like a lot of money to you, I'm sorry, but that's what it is. Um, and that's not a guarantee. I've heard of cases where they've asked for a lot more than that, which is why an I-134 I is actually a more useful way to, uh, to, to meet that requirement. But uh, good luck with that. Um, don't lose time on it. Uh, get on with that as quickly as possible, okay? 
still hope for 2021. Yeah, it's, a, it's about the appeals process, okay? Um, and only if, if you weren't in a lawsuit in 2021, then you've got no more hope. Um, but if you were in one of the lawsuits where there was a reservation uh, of visas, then yeah, you can hope still, hope for the appeals, okay? Um, someone from Lome, is there a process I can do, DS260? You're in the same position as many thousands of other people. The, um, the test fade lawsuit, which got us some more information, more updated information, says that about 53,000 people have their document, their DS-260 process, but they're not scheduled yet. Um, so we know that they've scheduled around about 42,000 people, nearly 43,000 people. They've got 53,000 people st ready to be scheduled, but, uh, you know, where they've processed their, uh, their cases. So, you know, um, many, many people are ready to be scheduled, but there just isn't the, the time. We've got basically two months left of processing. Uh, July interviews, they've scheduled around about 3,700 so far. They might schedule a few more in the next couple of days, but uh, so they've scheduled around about 3,700. Last month was about 4,000 cases. Um, that's pretty good pace. I'm pleased with the pace, um, but there are a lot of people that are going to miss out because in reality, they should not have got, gone current, right? The current current is you know, supposed to be when all uh, where all the remaining demand can be met by the number of visas that are left. In reality, that's not the situation. That's not why they went current this year. So it was going to be a mess, right? Um, someone from Melbourne. I was hoping to at least get someone. So we got Paige. I was hoping to get at least someone from down under. So uh, good morning to you. Anyway, um, and hopefully. That information um, was helpful to you, but uh, good luck. Let me know what's going on with your case. Uh, Noyan, uh, you're watching from the US for the first time. Fantastic. Congratulations, Noyan. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the US. Um, for those of you that don't know, Noyan obviously has just come here to America on the DV program, but he's been providing a lot of the information. I won't embarrass him with who he really is. But he's been providing a lot of the information behind the scenes that uh, that we all use, uh, and so uh, you know, a great gratitude to to Noyan and, and best of luck. Uh, where did you settle in the end, Noyan? Um, did you go to Austin? Uh, like to know where you, where you are at least for now until other things work out. And I, I remember what you told me. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, I, I get these sort of questions occasionally from time to time. Elvis is asking, why are the documents still in the embassy after almost two years? They don't intend to give your documents back. Uh, it's your brother's documents. They're not going to give them back. When you go for your interview, you're supposed. the instructions say that you're supposed to take your original documents and copies. You show your original documents and you give them the copies. If you give them the originals, you're not getting those back. So, you know... Your brother, I'm sorry, isn't going to get those documents back. Now, if we're talking about his passport, then he can ask for that document, that passport back, right? That's his. He can he can keep that. Um, uh, other, but other documents, yeah, they're never coming back. Um, okay. I, I, I do like to get these sort of questions early in the year. Uh, this particular one is about adjustment of status. You submitted your DS-260 a week ago. Probably shouldn't uh, have done that, so early, frankly, um, but never mind. Um, uh, submitting a DS-260 for an adjustment of status case is an optional step. You don't have to do it, and I recommend you do it a little bit later in the process. Um, but yes, the next step is filling out the I-485, and there's a complete um, sort of package of documents that you would send with that. Um, and make sure you're you're taking advice from uh, you know from the forum um, uh, with someone's mum. If you don't if you don't know what I mean about that, then let me know in a few moments. Home, home, and um, and I'll give you a link which will give you all the adjustment of status information you need. Okay, um, your case number is pretty low. You can't file until at least 
you have to wait until at least the 1st of October. Don't file before that. Um, don't file your I-485 before that, okay? But, um, but there you go. Uh, speaking of someone else, um, so I'm saying, is it okay to travel to the USA now, June 6th, to do AOS? We'll get a lawyer for DV. Oh, man. You've left it very late, I have to say. Um, it's still technically maybe possible. There is a waiting period that you would normally have to wait. And if you waited that full waiting period, then you would run out of time. Um, so between you and a lawyer, you're going to have to figure out whether you think that's a worthwhile gamble or not. Okay. Um, there are plenty of lawyers that say, don't do what you're about to do. And the fact that you discuss it in public is not a great idea. You should be discussing that with a lawyer. Um, because having preconceived intent to come to the USA on a non-immigrant visa, uh, unless it's a dual intention uh, visa like an H1, but coming with an intention to adjust status from a non-immigrant visa um, is, is actually a pretty good way to get refused. Um, you're not supposed to do that. Okay. Um, okay, let me go. Oh, I've just jumped ahead. I hate this this uh, interface. Let me answer some questions a bit faster. Namaste from Nepal. What are the chances of getting current in Nepal this time, sir? I don't know. I'm not going to try and do any predictions. Uh, oh, you got your, your visa. Congratulations, Alvin. I'm pleased for you. Um, what will happen to the Nepal visa bulletin? Same question. Uh, just from, oh, Georgia, Georgia. Um, uh, let me just read the rest of this. Uh, the high CM from get scheduled. Please say, I don't know. <laughs> We're near the end of 2022. Please do some prediction. I can't predict. I can't predict that. There's just no way. It's what has happened is not logical. So asking me to apply some logic to, uh, to make a prediction, some mathematical logic or some experience logic or whatever is pointless. We're already in a place where logic isn't working, right? So it's pointless asking me to, to make a prediction about something that's just a complete guess. You're, literally, your guess is as good as my guess, right? There's no difference between what I know and what you know. There's, there's just you know, no difference. So don't, don't bother asking me for predictions about pretty much anything right now for DV 2022. And for DV 2023, it's too early to make any predictions. It's too early to even know how many cases we've got. Uh, or how many selectees we've got, or anything, okay? Um, Becky, do I need to write to KCC to notify the change of embassy for my interview, even if I already did? DV 2023 AF17K. 1NL says Doha, but in the DS260, I chose Nairobi. Right. If you live in Nairobi or near to Nai Nairobi, and that's your address, that's the embassy they're going to choose for you, whether you ask for it or not. It doesn't really matter what you ask for, in, in all honesty, in the DS-260. They will ignore that. Now, if you live somewhere else, but for, you've got genuinely good reason to interview in Nairobi, then, yes, you should be emailing KCC and explaining that reason and asking them to make an exception in your case to schedule you in Nairobi, okay? Um, AF-17K, though, you probably won't be current until probably early part of next year. So... You know, think about where you will be in early 2023. Okay. Uh, Ashuraf, you're married with two wives as a Muslim, and my second wife won DV 2023, but, uh, but glad she filed me and the kids in the initial entry. What should I do in the DS 260 in the place of the previous spouse? Oh, God. <laughs> Okay, so I get that you're Muslim, but as you probably are well aware, um, uh, you know, having multiple wives in the USA is considered a unnecessary, um, and, and and that means having multiple mother-in-laws. So why the hell would you do that? Um, but uh, but the the position in the US is that the second marriage um, is bigamous and not recognized. So you're actually still married to your first wife. So you've got all sorts of problems, right? So um, you've just got all sorts of problems. You probably applied with your other wife as well. You probably applied in your own name, giving your wife's name. So in other words, they've got all this information about you on your original entries. So when you're 
second wife applies for you, probably your entry is going to come up and your entry is going to be with your first wife, I guess, or your second wife, I don't know, or your 13th wife, I don't know. But you're, you've provided evidence that you've got some other relationship. If your first wife already applied as well, they got evidence about that, even if it was in a previous year. So you've got all sorts of problems, my friend. Um, and um, uh, and having two wives is the least of those problems. <laughs> um, um, I don't really have a good suggestion for you. I, you know, if you were, I don't have a good suggestion for you. Um, the reality is your marriage to your second wife is probably not considered legal in American immigration terms. Um, uh, therefore, her entry, quoting you as the spouse, uh, is probably um, going to be disqualified because actually she's not married to you um, because that, that marriage is considered bigamous uh, in the USA. So it's a little bit complicated to work through all that, but I don't think there's a solution. I personally would say you're very, very much at risk. If you want to try and proceed, that's up to you. But, um, you know, but there are grave consequences for lying. And if you tell the truth in your scenario, you're basically done. You're not going to get your, your visa. Okay, so yeah, I, I don't think I would be proceeding if I were you. Uh, Left King, good morning, Simon. I got an interview. It's the 10th of July. I asked, do you think there's been a chance that the AS visas will have been used up before then? No. Um, quite simply, 10th of July, you'll be all right. Uh, they, we have seen years where visas are used up, but not as early as July. And even though this year is a bit wacky uh, and there's all sorts of stuff going wrong, I can't see it happening by July because the issuances actually won't um, catch up uh, until quite late in July, possibly August. So um, so no, I, I don't think so. And, and if you're Africa region, no, there is not going to be a problem. Um, can a DV case be expedited? I tried contacting the center officer. Um, okay, so when you talk about expedite, expediting a case, you're really talking, I assume you're talking about an adjustment to status case. You can't really expedite. There is no formal expedite process. And in fact, DV lottery AOS cases, adjustment to statuses, um, are expedited naturally. Sometimes, you know, people get frustrated and they want to shake all the trees and get every, get their senators running around doing stuff for them. And you're welcome to try all that. And it has worked for some people in the past. Um, but it's not like there's a formal process of, uh, of an expedite fee or anything like that, as there is in some other uh, visa types. So, okay, so um, do what you can. But understand that if you're a DV-related adjustment of status, you're probably already going as fast as the um, field office can go with your case. Um, what's going on with MVC? My friend has, I don't know, it's such a vague question. I can't answer that. It's just a vague question. You have to give me a little bit more information. And MVC, by the way, don't do anything with uh, DV cases. So you're probably not talking about DV. Um, AS 20,000, DV 2022, interview in Cairo, Egypt, ready for scheduling, blah, blah, blah. How is, um, I understand the case numbers are in queue or in order. Uh, okay, so a couple of things to work through here. If your interview is in Cairo, but you're, you're not from Egypt, um, then you're actually current at any case number, right? Because the rest of Africa is current. So case number a AS29000 is current. Um, your case number AS20000, um, AS20000, yeah, you're, so you're not from Cairo, right? Um, so, you know, the reality is that they can go faster for a case that was there before yours. You say you're ready for scheduling. I wonder if you are. There are a few cases where um, people have been jumped in the order a little bit. They shouldn't be doing that, but it has happened. And don't forget, ready for scheduling, there's a ready for scheduling status. There's, there's, we know a bit more than we knew a few months ago. Um, so we now know that there are like three statuses that, that are ready for scheduling. There's Doc C, Doc Q, and, um, and RV. Um, RV stands for ready for the visa, right? 
Um, there's uh, Doc C and Doc, uh, Doc Q is documentary, documentarily qualified or documentarily complete. They're pretty much the same. So you, I believe, and I'm not 100% certain, but I think you go from either from Doc Q to Doc C, from Doc C to RV, and once you're in RV, you're really ready for scheduling. Um, but then there's some process, and we don't know what that process is, that moves a case to AV status. AV status means allocated visa. It means you're in this special queue. That queue is numbered by case number order, but it's up to the government and KCC to decide when they move cases into that, into that queue. So there is an aspect of when your process matters, uh, not when you submitted, that's all bullshit. Don't, don't get concerned about the day you submitted, that's not true, but it's the, the day you finish processing, right? So you say you're ready for scheduling. I don't know that you really are in AV status. Um, it's difficult to be precise. I don't know enough about your case, obviously. Uh, if you change your job, you don't need to update your DS-260. No. Elvis says again, will you have a chance with AF31000? I don't know. Uh, you're a DV2022. I would say your chances are very low. Put it like that. Very, very low. Uh, Ghana have decided to just not do any cases or very, very few cases. And if they are doing cases, they'll be working on the AV, AVQ for their uh, for their cases, which is going to be by case number order, and your case number is AF31000. Well, there's clearly going to be a lot of Ghanaian cases, much lower numbers than yours. So um, you probably have little to no chance, I'm afraid. There's nothing you can do about it. Oh, and, and they've told you, they've told you that you can no longer unlock your case, which means you are in AV status, you're in a queue, but it's a numbered queue, and you you're you're pretty much screwed i'm afraid um there you go carlos just uh, got issued on CX. that's awesome so obviously you celebrate when you when your visa is in your hand but uh but seeing it issued on CX, yeah you're 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 solid you're fine um any hope for an interview af30000 in 2020 i don't know uh i can't i can't i keep saying i can't I can't predict what's going to happen on individual cases like that. Uh, Payam is asking, if I won the green card lottery for 2023, I'm a healthcare worker. If I apply for medical and health work in the USA, will my visa deny uh, if I didn't have credentials? Blah, blah, blah. No. So firstly, don't bother applying for a job until you've got permission to work in the USA, which is the, uh, the point at which actually you enter and become an LPR. You should really apply for the job once you come to the USA. You can apply just a little bit beforehand, particularly with a specialized job like, um, you know, like the medical care field. But you'll find that whatever state you work in and what profession you choose within the medical care, there are various state level and sometimes federal level requirements that you've got to go through that you may not yet qualify for. Now, it's nothing to do with the DV process. Uh, it's just to do with being a medical professional in some state. That's You're going to have to look into all of that, but that's going to be easiest to do once you come to the USA. So probably what you'll do is you'll come to the USA, you'll take some temporary work, and while you're doing that temporary work or, or perhaps a related work that doesn't need credentialing, then you'll be getting your credentials to be able to upgrade your job back to what you're currently uh, doing. Okay. I can't give you much more advice than that. I'm not a medical professional, so uh, so I'm just I'm just explaining what you know what little I know about that process. Okay. Um, any idea about Tunisia if they increase their capacity? No, I, I have no idea. They don't let me know. Strangely, I wish they would. It would be so much more convenient for everyone if they would send me an email when they send, or just copy me in on the email they send to KCC, so I knew the um, the amount of capacity they have per embassy, but strangely, they don't do it. Um, 2022 winners with a low number of cases, but have not yet invited for interview. What do you think about that, please? Yeah, that's going to happen. This year is not going to be pretty, okay? I think KCC have done a, the best job they could have done uh, with the pilot program. They have fixed a lot of the problems. I'm not saying it's perfect by any means, but they are going to issue, without a doubt, they're going to issue 40,000 plus probably more than 45,000 visas. That's a hell of a save 
from where we were at just a few months ago, right? Um, so, you know, whilst they're not issuing in the correct way and perhaps they're not respecting case numbers and they're not respecting countries and that sort of thing, they are getting as many through as they can possibly get through. Um, and that's, you know, frankly, probably the best we could expect from them. Um, okay. The happy human says, thanks for, thanks for your continued efforts in educating all of us. Thank you for that. I like your haircut too. I, I'm thinking of doing the same thing with mine. Um, so anyway, uh, can the same person fill a form I 134 for different DV cases? I think I saw you uh, asking the same question in in the um, in one of the Telegram channels. Um, it's not a good idea. Uh, so the new I 134 specifically ask the sponsor, have you sponsored anyone else? And so uh, the, there's a formula. When you fill in the I-134, if let's say I'm filling in the I-134 for you. I have a child who's dependent on me. So my family size is me, my wife, and my child, right? If you've got five people, uh, if you've got five dependents and you on your case, now my income needs to cover... Uh, my family of three plus your family of six, that's nine people. If I had previously sponsored someone else, I'd have to add that in as well. And so the income requirement is going up and up and up. It's based on the number of people that are in our combined families. So by, uh, by one person filling in a form for two different cases, you're creating a risk, okay? Um, you're increasing the amount of income that they should be using, and you're just making life a bit difficult. So if you can, avoid that. Um, you know, try, try to get a friend of that person to fill in the I-134. Now, there is no financial obligation, no legal obligation by the I-134. It's not like the I-864. So, you know, once people know that, maybe someone would, would fill that in for you. Okay? Oh, I've just answered that question by Blaze without clicking it. I apologize. You were probably all wondering what the hell am I, am I talking about? Um, how many? How do you find out how many cases are waiting in Ankara Embassy or any embassy? Well, we know the numbers for Khartoum and Addis Ababa because of a particular lawsuit called the Tesfaye uh, lawsuit, which was about suing in those particular embassies. But we don't know any other case numbers for any other um, embassies. Um, and you know, we, there, there's no way we can get that information apart from the suing uh, to get that information, right? So unfortunately, no, we don't know what you know what the queue in Ankara looks like. Um, 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 um. Elvis um, is asking, does I'm ready to be scheduled? So if there's corrections to be made, I should no. That doesn't mean that you're going to be scheduled soon. No. Um, that's just a very standard piece of text that they tell everyone. And lots of people at Accra and other embassies are not going to be scheduled. Um, okay, let me try and find some more questions. Can you still join a lawsuit to reassign my allocated case that is AV, even through Curtis, the government fire responsive plea, blah, blah, blah. Um, ask Curtis. I, I, I don't know. I don't think. Curtis has closed all the groups group lawsuits, as far as I know. I think he's doing individual mandamus cases. He was charging 5000 each for those. And then I saw he was increasing that to $7,500 each. Um, that's expensive. Uh, it's not expensive in American terms, but it's expensive in other countries' terms, I know. Um, uh, I just paid $11,000 for a fridge. So, you know, frankly, you know, $7,000 is not expensive for a life-changing opportunity. As I say, my fridge just cost me eleven thousand dollars, and to have the bloody thing fitted cost me another seven hundred dollars. So you know, you guys abroad don't really understand how much money things cost here. Uh, you know, anyway. So, um, so uh, I think your only option would be an individual mandamus lawsuit. But discuss that with Curtis and see whether he even thinks that would be you know uh, effective in your particular scenario. Okay, or, or any other lawyer. I mean, you know, feel free. It doesn't have to be Curtis. Um, I saw, uh, okay, so from 2022, will it be an email? Okay, just 
being clear, Arvin, you may be talking about DV 2023. You've got to be clear with me. DV 2022 doesn't use the document procedure because it was blocked, right? Uh, it was removed. Um, DV 2023, we don't know whether they can use the document procedure or not. Okay, so you have to be clear what your situation is. Um, someone asking about uh, Abhijan. I don't know. I don't know. I can't answer that question. 221G, when they keep the passport, when do they return? Any idea? There's not a consistent... People get a bit freaked out about this. Um, in general, if the CEO thinks that they are going to approve this case in the next few days, then, yeah, I think it's likely they would hold on to the passport. If they thought it's going to be three months before some background check goes through, then they would probably return the passport. But it's not its not a cast-iron uh, rule. It can go either way. Um, so, you know, I personally wouldn't read anything into that. Um, but I would be, if I were in an interview and they said you're going to be an AP, I would be asking why. Um you know, and, and what's the reason and find out why. And if they say, okay, it's because we need to do additional background checks, okay, you know it's going to take a while. If it's because they say they're going to check your education certificates, for example, because you interviewed in a country where they don't recognize the education certificates that you've got from another country, then, you know, that would take a few weeks. Um, so, you know, ask the questions. You know, it doesn't, it, there's no harm in asking. You politely, don't don't be rude, but you can politely ask the questions. Okay. Ahmed says, if I chose married to a US spouse, but uh, he's not by mistake, I had, oh God, I had to add the spouse, add applicant. Someone told me it happened in 2018 and there was no problem. <laughs> okay. Oh dear. I think, I, I think I've answered this question before, but basically, as I understand it, you chose married to an American citizen and therefore didn't add your spouse in the original entry, right? So you've given them the information that you're married, but your spouse is actually not a US citizen and you didn't therefore enter the details in the, um, in, in the case. Now you've heard from someone who's probably bullshitting that in 2018 it was all wonderful. In reality, that's gonna be a denial. Um, if you're if you're actually married and you didn't list your spouse, that is a denial. It was a deni denial for sure in 2018. Someone's bullshitting you, um, and it's still a denial, and there's no way around it. Okay, so there's no fix to that. Honestly, the number of times I hear people say, "Oh, my uncle's cousin's friend said, you know, uh, this will be fine." People talk a lot of bullshit. I just I just published a video just a couple of hours ago about YouTubers talking nonsense. Um, uh, and, you know, people talk a lot of bullshit, frankly. Um, and, uh, you know, don't be gullible. Don't, don't listen to this stuff about what you've heard someone say. It could be an entirely different situation or they could just be lying, right? I mean, I heard aliens had landed on the moon, you know. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's true. Uh, can we make our documents ready before the interview come? Yes, of course you can. Get them ready. Um, if you're DV 2022, you're, you should absolutely have your documents ready because there's only a small amount of time left that you could be interviewing. For God's sake, don't leave it to the last, last minute. Uh, what do I think about the Jerusalem embassy in Israel? I think it's a stupid place to put the bloody embassy, frankly. Um, um, clearly political. Uh, clearly nonsense. Every other country in the world, apart from one other country, um, doesn't have their embassy in that city in America because of Trump moved it to that city. Um, so I doubt that's the question you're asking me, <laughs> but that's what I feel about it. And you didn't ask me a more specific, clear question. So that's how I'm going to answer it. Okay. Uh, any information about Abu Dhabi? No, none. Um, I don't know, 2023, 40,000, I want to fill in DS260. Um, will I be scheduled? I don't know. Your number's not particularly high, but um, uh, but the thing is we don't know what the highest case numbers are, so I can't tell you where your case number exists within that whole, uh, with that, uh, within that whole thing. So you've gone to Austin. Awesome. I need to come down and see you. 
Um, but uh, but thanks for your ongoing efforts there, Noya. Um, must be must be cool in well, not cool. Must be nice in in Austin. It's a great city. I'm sure you're going to enjoy that. Uh, thank you for the inquiry. Your case number is now current for interview processing. Once the interview date has been scheduled, yeah, this is for you. So yeah, you're in this AV um, status where you're in this queue. Um, so you know you're some number in the queue. Um, I wonder if I could show that, but uh, test fay. Yes, I can. Here we go. Let me just show what I'm talking about. Um, so you've got an idea. So what I'm about to show you here, share screen. So this is um, this is information from the Tesfe lawsuit. This is a Curtis Morrison lawsuit, and where he's suing a couple of embassies or a, or four on behalf of people of four a couple of embassies, and he's suing for people in Addis and people in Khartoum. And in Addis, you can see that based on the case number, people have an order in the queue. 350 out of 1,143. That's case numbers, right? So, or 443 out of 1,143. So, right, you know, right at the end of last month, Addis Ababa had 1,143 people in a queue, and they're in, and frankly, I don't think they even took any cases uh, for July. Maybe they will, but they're only going to take 20 or 30 cases at most. That's all they're doing. We we already know that from. Um, from a, a, another declaration. Um, for Khartoum, the queue is even longer, 1,332. So, um, so this is official information from the government. This is in a, a pleading or a, a declaration um, from the government. So that's how we've got that information. So it's true. I just don't know the information for all the other, um, all the other cases. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ahmed, Ahmed, I already answered. Let's see. Epic, ga Epic Gaming saying thanks to Noyan. That's great. Probably your data I'm following every day religiously. It helps more than you can imagine. Yeah, exactly. Um, anything that, that helps the transparency is useful. Uh, haha, yeah, need the link. Okay, so forums. Uh, you were 23. You're a 23 case, aren't you? Okay. Hang on a second. Okay. I'm going to put the, in the chat a link to an absolute gold mine of information. Um, this particular forum thread is uh, operated by a, a, a user called Someone's Mum. That's her username. In the very first, um, in the very first uh, message in that thread, there's a link to a spreadsheet that has all sorts of information. Please make sure you read all that information before asking someone's mum a question that you could have answered by just reading the bloody spreadsheet. So please do do that, right? Uh, I'm trusting you to do that. Um, but then, you know, that's got all the information you need to process your cases. She's amazing. Uh, she lives very near me. Um, actually, I've got to have dinner with her soon because I owe her a, a bottle of wine. It's one of, one of my... Uh, subscribers sent me a donation with the caveat to say take Susie who's in the in the forum and uh, and someone's mum out to uh, to dinner and so yeah I'm gonna do that um, okay um, think of coming to the US for my masters for on F1 this fall uh, and now you won 2023 will the embassy deny me the F1 visa if I do not submit the DS-260. Good question. Um, you need to play this fairly carefully. When you file the DS-260, it's an application for immigrant, uh, an immigrant application, right? So if you file that now, you would have to declare that in the F-1 visa application. Simply having won the, 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 um, the lottery is not something you have to declare. They may know about it. They're unlikely to know about it, frankly. And you don't have to discuss it unless they ask you. If they ask you, for God's sake, tell the truth. Um, but yes, I would personally not submit the DS-260 yet. Get the F-1 visa. In fact, even go to the USA. And then once you're in the USA, um, you will submit a DS-260, but later. And the link I just put in the, uh, in the chat um, is going to be useful for you as well. Okay? So go read that. 
Um, <laughs> same question over and over. My niece is 18K and AV ready for anchor of Turkey. I keep saying I can't answer these questions, uh, even though it's your niece and you're a lovely fellow for, for, uh, for helping her uh, with an I-134. But no, I can't tell you when she's going to be interviewed. I just don't have, I don't have visibility into how many people are in the queue for each embassy or how many, uh, how, what the capacity is for the remaining months. There's only two remaining months. So, um, you know, no, I don't have that. Georgia, Georgia got one more question. Does embassy suspect on marriage if the guy is 10 years older than the lady and got married after the result? Both of them never married before asking for a friend. <laughs> um, being 10 years older than the the guy being 10 years older than the woman or the woman being 10 years older than that, that's not suspicious. Um, getting married after the result, yes, it can be suspicious. And some embassies will ask for proof of the relationship prior to uh, the lottery. So if you've taken trips together, for example, and you've got travel receipts uh, of where you both flew somewhere on a nice holiday or, you know, some sort of proof that the relationship existed before the lottery win. If you've got no proof, um, and I got a question from someone today saying, I live in a different country to the woman I'm just about to marry. Okay, you live in a different country. I mean, it just doesn't sound logical. It just doesn't sound like you're in a committed relationship. So, you know, what I don't know your situation or, or your friend's situation, um, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, just use some common sense as to whether that's going to be believed or not. Now, if it's not believed, here's the downside. If you go for an interview and you say you're, uh, you're, and you're married and they believe that you've got married in order to commit immigration fraud, that's serious. That's a serious problem. You can at least both be banned from the USA forever, at least. Um, and the, the worst repercussions can happen. So, um, so please be careful, right? Don't say you're uh, if, if, if it's a bullshit relationship, just stop, right? Um, don't do that. Oh, thank you, Sting. Sting, I, I love your, I love your music. Um, but, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, lots of afraid nervous. Yeah, exactly. I'll bet you're, you're obviously interviewing Taiwan. It's scheduled for next month. Yeah. Fingers crossed for you. Okay, you'll be fine. The interviews are easy, by the way. People get worried about the interviews, but the interviews are the easiest part. They're usually over in five minutes flat. They don't ask a lot of questions. Um, it's pretty easy. Okay. Uh, Sir Britt, I, I don't think I've been knighted yet, but um, but thanks for the thought. Um, okay. Mm. What about if marriage was pre I don't, I don't know what that means. My wife was 17. Will that be a problem in an interview? If you married a 17-year-old, that's legal. Um, there's nothing illegal about that. And basically, with the exception of the bigamy thing that I described earlier, um, the U.S. government, for immigration purposes, takes the view that if it's legal in your country, um, then they'll accept it as being legal here, right? So, um, you know, as long as that, that marriage is legal where you came from, then that's fine. Now, the caveat to that is the bigamy situation I discussed earlier. They're just not prepared to, to bend on that one, right? Um, so, you know, not, not a problem there. Probably not a problem. That's, that's what I would say. I mean, 17 is not that young. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, 22 20k Game of Thrones. Oh, sorry, you got you got to an L. Beside the medical and getting all the documents ready for interview, I should register for the interview online. Yeah, in general, Milos, uh, there is a most embassies have a, a website where you go. It's often a company called US Travel Docs, so it's US Travel Docs dot com or something. And it's got they'll give you the link. Um, and it's a courier, essentially, but they control the, the interview process and the scheduling of other types of interview. You only need to register an account with them. You don't need to register for another interview appointment. You have an interview appointment. You're just registering uh, with their service, okay? 
Um, Say, say, is saying I'll be interviewing a mom, but my daughter will not be able to attend. Can they reschedule her interview in a different embassy later, Lebanon? Um, probably not. Um, and you're wasting an opportunity by not getting her to a man. Um, it's going to be much, much more complicated, taking years potentially to bring her to the USA later. Um, there is theoretically a process to schedule people after your issuance of visa, but uh, and before your entry but it's not a process I would recommend anyone tries to go through. The only exception to that is the legitimate follow to join process, which is which is an I-824 process, which is where the principal applicant adjusts status in the USA and the derivatives are in some other country. And then the derivatives can have a, an interview in their home country and then follow to join the uh the principal applicant but that's not the same when you're doing consular to consular office is there's not such a well organized process um so you know it's probably not going to work out so if you want a visa for your daughter get her to a man okay um ton says how am i doing i'm doing great thank you i've just been very very busy recently um i with a question follow-up i have av i think for many months as i received an interview current for interview scheduling yes that's av i cannot unlock email months ago yeah yeah you're in that av queue you can't unlock you can't unlock your case you can't move your case it is limbo is what that that is but unfortunately if your embassy isn't scheduling you there's nothing you can do about it and it's a mess you know it's it's a mess DV 2023, but with a case 46K, I don't think I have a chance. What if I got a tourist visa and apply for AOS? Right. You, it's very frustrating when people don't give me their proper information. What region are you in? If you're in Africa region, for example, AF 46K is not particularly high. But the point is you can't file uh, adjustment of status until you're current anyway. So... Uh, you know, consular processing or adjustment of status isn't going to make a lot of difference in terms of your case number. Okay. But anyway, give me more clear information if you want clear answers. Um, Ahmed says, thank you. And you're very welcome. Um, I'm often asked this question from Becky is saying, um, is there a specific um, format to write to KCC? No, there is no specific format. The only thing you have to do is when you're writing to KCC, you always quote your full case number, including the leading zeros. They won't accept the number for some reason without the leading zeros. So full case number, just like it was shown on your original 1NL, all the, all the letters, 2023, 20, AS, and then 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever it is, right? The whole thing, your full name, uh, the principal selectee's num name, and your date of birth in uh, in month, month, day, day, year, 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 year format, right? Um, in that format, it's important, okay? Um, yeah, do that. Um, do they still require the passport to apply for the DV lottery? Yeah, I just did a video about this today because EBM scholars uh, went and told everybody that if they didn't, enter the lottery with the passport, they were going to be disqualified. And that's just not true. Um, because the passport rule was blocked in February, February 4th, I think it was, or February 7th, uh, by uh, Judge Kelly from Washington. And um, so they will not apply the passport rule. Now, they might reintroduce it for the next, uh, the next lottery period. But they're almost out of time to even do that. So, I, so it won't apply in DB 2022 won't apply in DV 2023, and it probably won't apply in DV 2024. We don't know if it will ever come back, okay? Should I say in my job offer, in my, job, in my interview that I have several job offers already, Minos is asking, don't bullshit. <laughs> don't make it up. Don't, you know, if, you, if, you've got a, if you've got a cousin or a friend that works at a, you know, Italian restaurant in, in uh, and I'm being, or Greek, perhaps Greek, I don't know. Um, in the USA, and he's offering you a job, you know, washing dishes. For God's sake, don't talk about that. Um, you know, it's not a genuine job offer. Now, if you're a programmer 
and you're a smart programmer and you're perhaps well known in your industry or you've had contracts in the USA before, which was pretty much my position when I came to the USA, yes, uh, you can pretty much get a reliable job offer, but don't bullshit, right? If you think you've got good prospects for getting a job, talk about that, right? But don't say you've got a formal job offer from an American company unless it's absolutely true, okay? And it will rarely be absolutely true because an American company isn't going to just wait for someone to go through the DV process taking six months or a year and have and hold the job open for that person for all that time. Why would, you know, nobody's going to believe that story, right? So unless you've got particular skills, you're particularly in high demand, you're particularly good at what you do, uh, then it's probably not believable that you've got a job offer already, okay? Uh, the worst thing you can do is lie to a consular officer. Just really bad idea. Don't do it. Okay. Any news about the documents? No, there's no news. Um, 2023 winners. If your case number is 12K from Nepal, is there, Nepal, is there a chance for an interview? I don't know yet. Don't know the numbers. But I, I will say that for Nepal, I've been hearing a lot higher numbers, like 19 and 20,000. I don't understand why that's happened so far. Uh, why the case numbers go that high or what that implies, but we'll see once we get a little bit more idea of how many people are selected, okay? What does MVC mean in the DV lottery states status? Uh, you're talking about SEAC. Uh, basically, at MVC is the starting point for everybody in this, in this process. It means you've not been scheduled yet. That's all it means. It's, it's nothing. It's like being on go. If you play Monopoly, it's like being on the go thing. You're not, you've not. you gone anywhere, right? So that's what it means. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, you're Rashid Ali. You're from Pakistan now, say, in Saudi Arabia. Right. And you want to apply for the green card lottery? Uh, which one website? There's only one website for a start. Uh, DV Lottery um, government website. But if you were born in Pakistan, you're probably not eligible, okay? So um, so there's only one time of year when you can enter, but and the rules are published, but people from Pakistan will not be eligible to, to proceed, nor will they from India or China or Britain, my own country. Um, so, you know, you're probably not eligible to proceed, okay? It's not to do with where you live, it's to do with where you were born. Um, your case number is 2400. Is it okay to fill the forms in July? And guess what, Daniel? I don't have any idea what region or year you're talking about. So uh, frustrating. <laughs> so, um, so I don't know, but you know, maybe. Uh, if you want a better answer, give me a better question. Uh, did you say they keep previous DS information? Yes, they do. Um, it's well known that the that the information they collect through the DV lottery process, the entries, the DS260s, all of that, it's used to create a database of information which is very valuable from, uh, from a, uh, a security point of view. You get all this information about people around the world. Um, and, and they keep enhancing that information in any ways they can. So yeah, they absolutely keep that, that, um, that information. And they have stated in writing uh, in lawsuits, etc., that they don't intend to delete that information at any time. That's their information. They're entitled to keep it. Um, and because you're all foreign, you've got no rights to say delete it anyway. Uh, I'm principal. My daughter, five years old, is company. Oh, we talked about this one. She's five years old, and she's get her to a mom with you, for goodness sake. Um, I've already answered that. You were refused. Nadia, why were you refused? Hmm. I don't know why you were refused. Tell me. I can't remember your situation, Nadia, but I, tell me your situation there. Why were you refused? Uh, uh, Bashir said, you, you like my video about the YouTubers. They spread false and fake news and keep getting views and likes. The one that really pissed me off was that Passan Nevis. I mean, EBM always makes mistakes. He's... You know, he, he makes a good Tanzanian salad, right? And he can tell you about 
how you get a job as a truck driver or whatever. I, I don't know. Great. Good for him. Uh, I've got no problem really with EBM, but he does give some pretty awful information sometimes and people believe him. So, um, so it's kind of a challenge, right? But that other woman, that Passan Nevis, had the audacity to complain about the woman, uh, the user, one, two, three dreams or whatever, who had pointed out that, that Passan Nevis was giving bad information, really, you know, pissed me off. It really pissed me off that thing. It got my goat because uh, she, you know, she, she chose to make a video to try and humiliate a person for calling her out on being an idiot. And this was after I'd already told her that she was incorrect. Um, yeah, not a good person. Uh, I hope she sees that video. I've I've sent the video link to her because I really want her to see the video, and I want her to stop talking about DV because she's bloody, you know, foolish. So there you go. So anyway, I'm glad you like that, Bashir. But you can see it sort of a, a personal annoyance of mine. In the DS260, it says to write where I've lived since the age of 16. I did that uh, exchange programs in the US. Um, when you do an exchange program or when you go for a vacation, you typically go somewhere for um, a few weeks or a couple of months or three or four months or whatever, you know, a period of time. But when you go there, you don't change where your bank account, uh, you know, is set registered to you, right? You're still, you're still living in your home address. So it's just a short temporary vacation. So generally, no, you don't give those addresses as places you live. They're just places you travel to temporarily. Okay. Okay, that's just jumped a lot. Right, I'm going to quickly just sort of scan through. I'm just over an hour here. So I'm going to scan through here and see if um, see if there's any other interesting questions here. Um, is the I-134 um, required for all applicants or it's not necessary? You smart applicants get it filled out. If you can get it filled out, get it filled out. It's the public charge requirement applies to every case, every immigration case, not just DV. And one way to satisfy that for DV cases is an, is an I-134. So if you can get it, it's a wise thing to have with you at the interview. Okay. Um, you'll have many people, EBM scholars included, telling you that at this embassy it's not required or it won't be required if you go on a Tuesday or some bullshit, right? But my advice is to prepare it, have it ready with you, no matter which embassy you're at, okay? Um, does your country of eligibility play a role in getting an interview, even if you have a high number? No, not really. Nothing is by uh, the country of eligibility. You're, you're a person within a region, not within a country in a region. You're you're in the region. It's got nothing to do with your country. Um, when you fill the DS-260, when you have family, do you submit the DS-260 separate or once you, um, basically you submit them all at the same time. You have to go through the process of submit, submit, submit. And you do that all roughly at the same time. You get them all ready and then submit them all, okay? Um, One question, it's been on my mind since I won the DV Lottery 23. My case number is AF30K, and I'm from Tunisia. Does that mean there are 29,999 entries from Tunisia? No, it absolutely doesn't mean that. It doesn't even mean, uh, firstly, your number is in the region, not in your country. But it also doesn't mean that there were that many entries from your region, uh, or selectees, rather, in front of you. I, I've got... I've got a number of videos that explain this, but no, it's got absolutely nothing to do with Tunisia. It's more to do with the African region as a whole. Yes, it shows your place in the overall sort of um, order of things. Uh, it shows where you are roughly, but there are not 29,999 actual cases in front of you because there are holes in the case numbers. And, um, and I've, ex I've created uh, videos that explain that. Another OCR. <laughs> um, I have an interview scheduled for July in Suva and plan to stay. However, I'm confused by the quota, as you say, it's reached already for OC. I didn't say it's reached already for OC. I've said, what I've said is that the number of people scheduled in OC is, is 1,150. Let me just check that. Um, hang on a second. Right. So 1,132 
people have been scheduled in the OC region. The quota for OC is 850. Um, but of the 1,132, uh, 334 so far are issued. 600 are ready. That means they're scheduled for an interview. And 193 are refused. And some of those will be refused permanently. Some of them will be temporarily refused. Right, so if we take 150 of the refusals and we say they're coming off of the 1132, that takes us down to 1,000. If we assume that some of the ready cases um, will have been no shows already or will be no shows in the future or will become refusals, then that takes that 1,000 number down a little bit. And so, you know, even though 1,132 have been scheduled, it doesn't mean they're all going to get issued, right? Now, the other thing is that the quota can be increased by a movement or a reallocation uh, from one region to another. Africa region is going to underfill. So there are going to be unused visas in, uh, in the African region. And there's a part of the law called 203C, which describes uh, the process by which the allocation happens. And the last part of that piece of the law, I think it's section four of that piece of the law, describes how uh, the government can move allocation from an unused region to the other regions. And when they do that, they distribute those visas to the other regions, all of them, in the percentages of the original quota, right? So that would mean that um, OC would get about 1.6% of any number of visas that are, that are unused from one region and move to, it to, uh, to the other regions. So, as I mentioned earlier in this call, if 5,000 visas were considered unused in Africa, if they just make that decision, right, um, based on the African quota of about 23,000, if they're only at about 18,000, then, um, then that would increase the quota for uh, Sydney or could increase the quota for Sydney, not would, but could, um, by about 85 visas, right? So we would be into the 950 range, roughly. Um, now, there are only 13,000 people scheduled in, uh, in Africa region, and several of the big consulates in Africa are closed or have been doing very little. So that's why I'm suggesting that Africa is probably going to underfill. Um, but it's, you know, we don't know for sure. Okay? So lots of, lots of math, but I'm trying to explain to you that... Uh, we don't say the the quota has been filled for two reasons. Number one, they're not issued yet, and the cases that have been scheduled won't all be uh, issued. And number two, the quota itself is slightly flexible if we can get visas from another region. Okay? Um, I hope that's clear, uh, Lisa. Okay. Um, Sydney Embassy. Uh, yeah, exactly. If you go back to the very beginning, NI, I actually went live thinking about the Australians. And I said right at the very beginning of this video, I explained everything I just explained to Lisa. Um, uh, I explained, you know, my thoughts about the Suva Embassy, the Sydney Embassy, you know. Um, and I was hoping that I would catch some of you Aussies uh, up early this morning. Happy Sunday. Um, okay, a couple more questions. Um, I'm just going to look for a couple of couple of quick questions. See if there's anything interesting I can I can ask answer here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting a lot of repeated questions here. I'll just answer this last one. Um, unless I see another question pop up in a moment, that's interesting. So this question is, what does it mean when you get the email that says your case is now current for interview processing? That's what it says. You've misquoted it, but that's what it says. Current for interview processing. What does that mean from KCC? It means they've allocated you to a queue for your embassy, and they've assigned you um, a position number. That position number is based on your case number. Unfortunately for you, your chances of getting an interview depend on how many people are in that queue, your position in that queue, um, how many people get added to that queue after you, but with a lower case number, 
and how many, uh, how what capacity your embassy has in order to process. So, in rough numbers, I showed earlier that you know we have a couple of embassies with over a thousand people in the queue, a thousand cases, sorry, two thousand people in the queue. But let's say you've got an embassy that's got five hundred people in the queue, five hundred cases, we'll say, and they've got capacity for a hundred cases then that means that 400 people are not going to get an interview in the next month, right? They will wait. In the meantime, more cases will be processed and added to that queue. So maybe that queue becomes 450 people in that queue. And as they're added to the queue, they're in they're positioned based on their case number, not when they got added to the queue, but their case number. So, you know, your case number is still critically important to, to find out where you are in that queue. And the capacity and the operation of your embassy, whether it's taking cases or not, is critically important. In some embassies, there's basically no queue. And so they're taking all case number ranges right up to high case numbers. In other embassies, there's a long queue, which means only low case numbers will have a chance. That's basically how it will work. Okay. And also, when you get that current for interview processing, you can't change anything. You can't change to another inter uh, embassy. You can't change anything on your DS-260. You can't unlock it. There's no changes you can make. That's why I call that status limbo, because you're absolutely stuck. You you have to just wait for uh, KCC to schedule you, which depends on the embassy. And in, the, in many, many cases this year, there are going to be people who are in that same position, and they won't ever get, a, uh, they won't get an interview, which is sad. But there you go. Uh, okay, a couple of interesting questions came in, so I'll answer them quickly. Do I expect retrogression for the next VB? I don't know. Um, I'd love to predict that one because it's an interesting technical question, but I, the way they've handled the VB is just total bullshit this year. It's nothing to do with logic, so I'm not going to try and guess it. There was that warning about retrogression, and I have seen retrogression before in 2018 uh, in Africa region. There was retrogression. So... Um, so it has happened. Epic Gaming, I'll take your question quickly. Um, still hasn't uh, been in a queue since April. EU 10,000? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It seems like they've skipped over you because um, you know, you'd have to tell me. I'm sure you're watching, but I don't know whether uh, cases are going uh, before you or not. But, um, oh, yeah, there you go. So higher case numbers are being interviewed before me. Yeah. Contact KCC and see if they'll do anything about it. But, um you know, don't just sit there quietly. Um, okay, your 2023 winner. You ask KCC to reopen the DS260. Holla, it's <laughs> never mind. Um, I mean, all I'll say is that there's a great big backlog of emails at KCC. They're massively behind. They're going to take about a month to answer people because people submit the DS-260 too quickly, then they realize they did it wrong, and then they're asked to unlock. Um, your passport date is expiring. Don't even ask to unlock. Have you asked them? Are you asked? OK. I wouldn't even have unlocked for that. You just apply for the new passport. You take the new passport and the old passport to the interview. But anyway, there we go. Um, yeah, the, the, the Afghanistan thing, by the way, um, they said they were going to do lots of good things for the people of, of Afghanistan. They haven't. Um, it's frustrating how the American government behaves sometimes. I'm pleased that they did quite a bit of outreach for the people of Ukraine because Ukraine was invaded by, uh, you know, by Russia, right? Um, and they stepped up. But we're talking about white Europeans. Now, people from Afghanistan have been brutally treated for quite some time, and many are in peril of death. Um, and, you know, but we haven't really kept our promises to a lot of the people there. We haven't behaved responsibly. And I just wonder why. Why is that? And uh, I sort of, it's a question I don't want to answer, but there you go. Um, yeah, they just send me the template interview. Yeah, I get you. Uh, oh my God, I hate these sort of questions. Can you please re respond to my question? I'm waiting, Simon. Yeah, but I don't know what your question is. I have this whole list of questions, right? They all fly by pretty quickly and I pick some, I read through and I pick some that are interesting. 
And if you had, rather than saying, can you answer my, my question, if you'd have repeated the question, for example, maybe I'd have had a chance. But if your question is going to be something stupid, like, you know, here's my case number, here's my, my embassy, can you tell me what date and time I'll be interviewed on? I don't know. So don't ask me that question, please. If you've got some sensible, real question to ask, ask it again now in the next few seconds. Otherwise, I'm going um, to close the call anyway. Um, OK, DV. Uh, you mix up your first and last name in the DV lottery form, but you filled it correctly on the DS260. So you did the right thing on the DS260. Hopefully, that won't be a problem. That's the only thing I can say there. But when you when you um, when you ask questions, please give me your year, region, case number, so I can understand you know how to answer your question a little bit better. Um, all right, uh, <laughs> this is one of those cl you know classic things. My wife and I live in uh, different countries. Is it advisable to choose respective countries we live in as the embassy? No, you 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 interview together. And married people usually live in the same house, let alone the same country. Um, so unless you want to create an impression that, um, you know, I mean, maybe it's for business reason, but if you just live in a different country, then are you really married? Um, there you go. So. <laughs> Say hi to your son. Uh, let me know what your son's name is, and I'll give him a special shout out. Um, you're not obsessed. It's just this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and you know um, I can help with that. So I don't blame you for asking. Um, okay, that that guy that asked, you know, can you answer my question? Hasn't asked, hasn't asked that. <laughs> um, DB twenty twenty three winner with a case number of forty three thousand. Uh, date of birth on my high school certificate is different from the date of birth on the passport and all of my other documents. What can I do? Your date of birth is not established by your education certificate. It's, it's established by your um, your birth certificate, right? Now, I'm very well aware that in Africa particularly, people mess around with their um, with their date of birth to enable them getting into getting an education. Um, so it could be that or it could just be lousy record keeping. I, I don't know either way. But generally speaking, they, they're not looking at your education certificate for your date of birth. You do need to prove that that is your education certificate, but not the, the date of birth it says on there is your actual date of birth. That comes from your birth certificate, right? Your marriage information comes from your marriage certificate. Your, your birth certificate is your, your, you know, the birth information. Your passport is your legal name and your ability to travel. If you've got a swimming badge, that tells you you can swim 100 meters. Get it? It's all specific to the document you have, right? Your education certificate simply means you were educated. It doesn't mean that that is to do with your date of birth, right? That's, um, I, I get that question so many times. I don't understand why people don't think that, really. Um, your son is Nadi. Hello, Nadi. How are you doing? Your dad's, uh, I'm assuming it's your dad. Um, and you're a sponsor. Okay, great. Uh, I've been trying to help your cousin for over a year now. Been in the U.S. since 1971. U.S. citizen. That's awesome. 1971. Wow. Uh, before me. Anyway. Uh, hi, Natty. <laughs> Once again. Right. Quick look. Isn't that amazing? The guy that says, you know, why don't you answer my question? I gave him a chance. He hasn't bothered to re-ask the question. He could have just cut, cut and paste. Um, okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, I, I was just reading a question here that I thought would be a, an interesting last one here. Yeah, it, it's this one. So why KCC DQ so many cases for DB2022 under this last information near 90K visas, over 90K visas, actually? Um, over 90K people, I should say. They've, they've, they've scheduled 42,500, nearly 43,000 people. And their last declaration in the test case says that they have 
um, they've processed another 53,000. So yeah, over 90,000, 90, 95,000, or over 95,000. Um, why have they done so many? It's a great question. Um, they, they are processing to find the lowest case numbers, right? To, to process the lowest case numbers. They're trying to go by case number, generally speaking. They're building these queues up in the embassies and they're just trying to do the best job they can. They shouldn't, and I'm glad they're not, uh, arbitrarily deciding to just not process a bunch of cases because they've got enough cases processed. They're doing the best job they can. Now, we bitch about KCC a lot over the last two or three years. My relationship with KCC has gone downhill. I used to be quite friendly with them. They were, uh, they were you know, helpful to me. Uh, they knew who I was. You know, sometimes I would phone them and they'd give me, um, no, they wouldn't give me lots of information, but they were at least, you know, sort of friendly with me and give me some information and say, yeah, we know who you are. You know, we appreciate your videos, that sort of thing. Um, over the last two or three years, I'm sure they've been under pressure, and obviously we've been bitching about them a lot. So, uh, you know, I can't phone them these days because nobody can. They won't pick up the phone. But, um, uh, you know, but it's kind of, you know, it's kind of frustrating to see how things have gone so badly there. But in December 9th of last year, the pilot program was introduced, and frankly, that saved DV 2022. They did away with the stupid document process that has been a ridiculous, stupidly, uh, badly implemented system um, that screwed up DV 2019, screwed up 2020 and 21 and 2022 until they changed it in, in uh, December 9th. Now, it, it takes a lot of guts to admit that you're wrong and to change. And so I'm pleased they did that. Um, you know, um, uh, I wish they'd done things earlier. We wouldn't have quite the sort of the car wreck we're seeing right now. But at least they did something, okay? So, um, and one of the things they do is, uh, one of the things they did was just doing as many people as possible. Okay, Hanny, where are you? Hanny, Hanny, what's his face? I just saw your, your thing. Okay, we had an interview, uh, DB2022, our visa was approved, and we got an approved card, but it's been two months and we haven't got our visa yet. Should I email them or wait? What would be the reason? If this is what you want, want to mean? <laughs> oh. <sighs> okay. You haven't got your visa yet. So do you mean your visa or do you mean your green card? You had an approved, given approved card. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about because you're being unclear. So if this was what we were all waiting for, um, I'm kind of frustrated. Anyway, um, as far as I can tell from this lousy question that doesn't give any detail, you went for an interview, you were told you were approved, um, and but you haven't had your visa back from the interview from the consulate. Is that what you're saying to me? I hope that's what you're saying to me. Should you email them or wait? Well, you should email them, obviously. You don't just wait like a flower for the rest of your life. Um, will there be any reason, any idea? I don't know. That You're probably in administrative processing. Um, you can go on CAC. Uh, and see your status, you could have done that. And it will probably say refused and it will say something about, you know, um, you're in administrative processing, okay? So other than that, I don't know. I have no idea. I, have no, I barely understand your question, let alone understanding what's the status on your case, all right? All right, everybody. Um, we'll call that a day. Um, and uh, I hope that was useful to some of you. Um, thank you for listening in. Please subscribe to my channel. That's apparently important. Um, and uh, and give me a thumbs up, like on this video if you can. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.